Well, we want to start out just by thanking you guys so much for coming tonight. Um, you guys know, uh, hopefully you've heard me say it enough, just how much we appreciate your time and energy and efforts and cleaning your living rooms and putting out <laughs> snacks and late nights of conversation and just the million little things it takes to lead small groups and to do it well. And um, I love every day that I get to come into work and I see, all, I don't know if you know this, but outside of my office there's this big black board which has a little card and a picture for every single small group that we have according to the days of the week that they meet. So literally every day that I come into work I see your faces and I'm reminded of how much, uh, how much of an incredible team we have and how much uh, it is an honor and privilege to be able to serve you in this role. And so we just, again, like we want to start at every meeting we have is just how much gratitude and thankfulness that we have for what you guys and what you do and what you're about. Um, thank you for coming tonight. We uh, do these quarterly meetings to kind of help us get on the same page and figure out how to do small groups better and all that kind of stuff. So we're glad that you took this evening to come and be a part of this. We've got some things tonight that I hope are good. Uh, just so you know, we are recording all of this, so don't say anything too heretical because it will be on film and it will go online. And so we actually are, the little thing over there has you mic'd just as much as you have me mic'd. That's why I'm using a microphone right now. Um, and so, you know, just fair warning. Uh, this is going to go out, uh, so be careful. Uh, but we do what you to discuss and be a part of that. So, um, Mark, would you start us out in prayer for this evening? Thank you, Father. We offer our thanks tonight for the chest we have in your name. We're grateful for the refreshments, and may they just enhance our fellowship around these tables. Uh, pray, Lord, that you'll be in all these deliberations so we can help our small groups just be as, as strong for you as they can possibly be. Help them to be healthy and winsome, we pray. And thank you for Aaron, his work with this. And I uh, pray that uh, tonight would be edifying for us and would bring glory to your name. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Mark. We're going to start out here with a little bit of discussion. I know you guys have uh, probably greeted each other at your table a little bit before, but we kind of want you to take that to the next step. So up on the screen here, we have three discussion points that I'd like you to be able to do at your table. Go ahead and introduce each, uh, to yourself, if you haven't already, your name, uh, how long you've been leading a small group, how long have you been in this game, and then what was your favorite movie when you were in high school? A little thing to kind of get to know each other a little bit. Uh, maybe don't, don't be embarrassed or ashamed of something that you used to enjoy. Uh, but go ahead and share that with each other. You guys can go ahead and get started. Well, some more than others. Even if there were movies back in that day, I don't know. I don't know how that worked, but do your best. I am, I am. They're out. It's an awkward time to do it, but it had to get done sometime. Yes, thank you for something. We're just, we're just even them out, evening them out a little bit. Yeah, you've been a lot. I went 2010 in Lethbridge with Dan and Ann Corey, Reggie Hodges, Johnson, all the rest. 
Well, we hope you've got a little time to share with each other. Does anybody have an embarrassing movie from their table that you want to, you don't have to say who it was or who did it, but any interesting things about favorite movies you found out about anybody else? You can tattle. Anything exciting? Any surprises on favorite movies? My favorite movie was Grease, and I didn't realize how bad that movie was when I, <laughs> when I was a kid. And I was a 17-year-old, and then you get older, and you realize, it's <laughs> Yes. I have had the same experience. You know, my kids are, what, they're 11, 9, 6, and 2 right now. And, you know, you, you know as a parent, you want to you instill values in your children. And so part of that is I wanted them to watch good movies. You know, I remember the movies in my childhood, and they'll do the same thing. I get out some of these movies, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what were my parents thinking? You know? And so now my wife and I have to watch them first before we could do it with our kids, and almost like 90% were like, no, they can't watch that. <laughs> my dad's a pastor. What were we doing? Uh, but, you know, it it's done. from high school, but I, I remember on, on, a, on, I don't know if it was the first date or not, but on a very early date, I took a young lady to a movie called The Graduate. Oh. And we ended up leaving that one. Yes. <laughs> yes. I said, I'm not was. staying for this. <laughs> and that was the first time we were engaged in, and there was hi this hiatus of 40 years before we got married. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the deal breaker. <laughs> Yeah, it's so much easier nowadays. You can go online. You can find every detail about a movie. You can know everything going in. But yeah, took your chances back in the day. Well, uh, one of the things we want to start out today with is what we call a leader share. Um, this was something, if you guys remember last summer, where we had over in that room over there some meetings together. And we talked with each other. I did that with almost, I think, 90% of our small group leaders. It was a great time for me, especially as I'm just starting out in this position, to, to learn about you guys and learn what you like and what you need and what you ask for. And one of the things that kept coming up was leaders saying, I would love to get together with other leaders and just find out what their good ideas were so I could steal them, basically. Um, and so that's kind of what we want to do for our first little session tonight, is I want you to answer the question, what is the best thing that you did in your group this year? When you think back to the school year that's just now wrapping up, what was something that you did in your group that just really went well, uh, had a good impact, just helped us be a group better? If you want to, you don't have to just think of this year. You can go back a little ways if you need to. But what's one good thing that you're like, man, I wish you know, five years ago when I was a small group leader, I would have known about this, or something that I think would be helpful to other people. What's just the one good idea or one good thing that your group has done in the last year or so that you're like, man, I wish other people knew about this so they could do it too. So go ahead and do, talk about that in your groups, and then we'll come together. Yeah. 
Next year, we went to the park uh, and brought back a couple of videos from there. We'll take just a couple more minutes. So, a couple more minutes to wrap up. Okay, so next thing I want you guys to do at your group is to answer the question, what was said at your table that you want everyone to hear? Maybe you heard from another leader or another group and you're like, man, that was a good idea. So it's not awkward. You don't have to toot your own horn. You can toot somebody else's. And just say, like, 
I wish everybody could hear that. I wish we could all know. So at your table, decide on what that is. Maybe one or two of the things that were shared that you're like, everybody needs to hear that. That's such a great thing. That's such a good idea. I wish other groups would do that. So talk with each other, figure out what those are, and then we're going to get a chance to share them. I'm from Detroit, you know, it just happened. All right, so for our next part, I wanted to introduce you to someone here who's on my left. You might have seen her earlier today. This is Kat. She is our new small groups intern. This is actually her very first day. So uh, be nice, be friendly. We want, to, we want to keep her around. She signed up for a year, so we'll see. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you may have at times heard me refer to my team or referred to me in plural as we, and you might have wondered who the heck is that guy talking about? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, there's me, but we also do an internship program. So Kat is one of ours. We have another one, Lacey Bowes, if you've ever met her. Uh, she will, she'll, she's actually ending hers uh, in a couple weeks for the summer, and then she'll be back in the fall. Uh, but then we also have, I also have an assistant, uh, you may have met her before, Kaylee Ward, who was there. She uh, transitioned out this spring after our last meeting. Uh, Maddie Bridgeford has come in for a few weeks as kind of temporary. And then we'll have something soon, maybe, else. We don't know who that is yet. Uh, but there's always someone kind of behind the scenes who does the lion's share of the work and makes my job easier. Uh, that person's kind of been rotating in and out. But Maddie, for example, helped us get everything set up. And I don't know where those flowers came from. I was shocked to see those when I came out, but pleasantly surprised, uh, all those kind of things. So that's a little bit of my team and kind of how we work and, and who that is. And so, for example, if you get a text message from someone you don't know that says it's small groups, it could have been any of us that sent that. So, you know, be polite <laughs> and we'll get that going. But what we want to do is to share uh, the best ideas you had. So Kat's going to go ahead and write them up on the board there. Um, and we want to know just what are some great things that you've learned in your time this last year in small groups? What's something uh, you want other people? So we'll start over here at this table. Uh, what was a great one you guys, you guys had? We kind of have two. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first one was having a different person lead every week as a way of allowing different people in the group to have ownership and gaining experience teaching. And the second one was uh, playing games together as a way of kind of breaking the ice. And that was my group because we're fairly new. So. That really allowed us to kind of interact in a more casual way that allowed us to be more comfortable with each other. So, on the playing games, was that um, every time you played for a little bit at the beginning, or did you spend like once a month? That's what you did for the whole night, or how did that go? Uh, typically, our small groups are we meet together and hang out and talk and do a devotional or something, and then we play games. So we play games every week. Okay. All right, great. Right over here. Go ahead, Ron. Do yours. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we, in our in our home group, we have five couples, and we have each couple have a part of the of the group meeting. Like we have a uh, a moderator, and we have a uh, icebreaker person, okay, a prayer leader, and a song leader. We sing a song. We sing hymns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But each 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 uh, family has a part every every time. Okay. And they're always pretty much there all the time and, and seem to enjoy it. So everybody's expected to contribute when they show up. Do you rotate who does each of those? or? Well, at the end of the year, we'll change them out. Okay. <laughs> so you got a whole year. You better, you better get something you like. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be doing yeah. 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 No, that's a great point because... Uh, the reality is in our groups we have different gifts and we have different abilities and people can do different stuff and I mean I noticed that in uh, my small group this year is we uh, my small group just has several people who can teach I mean it's just it's kind of a we're you know abundant in that way 
And there was one couple that particularly, that's not what they do, but the wife especially was great with logistics and details. And she felt kind of left out for a long time because, you know, she and her husband never did teaching because they weren't comfortable with it. And we had to tell them so many times throughout the year, like, we couldn't survive without you. Because she runs, you know, where we're meeting and who's bringing what and, you know, the responsibilities and all that kind of stuff. And she really made it run uh, because we each were, were able to do it. So, yeah, those things are great where you can get people to use their gifts and shine and do what God's made them to do. Great. Last but not least, our back table. Um, I told the group here, I kind of felt selfish on this a little bit, but uh, not too long ago I had emergency surgery. Mm -hmm. And so come to find out at 7 o'clock in the morning, our whole home group was there with my wife. Hmm. So if you look at it from pastoral care, uh, I, think, I think they're pulling together pretty well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the ideal that we, we hope all small groups become. I mean, that's part of why we're here. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, on the ministers on staff, we have a rotating pastoral care schedule where um, each of us, like mine is tomorrow, for example, where for a 24-hour period, any pastoral care needs that we have as a church, we kind of, as, a, as ministers, rotate that responsibility. And that's great, and I love doing that, and that's a wonderful thing. But there are so many times where those needs come up, and I said, man, I wish this person had a small group. You know, I'm happy to show up, and I know that's, that's a big thing, and I love doing that. But, you know, because you guys know each other. You guys have those connections. You know, you have those relationships. So it's great to see groups that, that follow through and do that. I think I got to see one of the staff. I was there long. <laughs> yeah. I came by. I remember, yeah. 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 Any others that want to be thrown out? Any other great ideas you saw that you really think would be beneficial to everybody to hear? We had all had about variety, so like once in a while doing a video or mm. something too, if maybe you normally do the scriptures, but just something to not get in a rut of always doing the same sure. thing every single week. So. Yeah, changing it up. So what are some things you did? Videos you mentioned? Yeah, so instead of just doing like a study, maybe like a right now media video or they mm -hmm. brought some stuff back from said. Uh, North okay. And there's always the small group curriculum that we work at and get you every week. Uh, so that's a default that's always there too. But yeah, it's great to, to change it up and to have those varieties. So these are great things, great ideas. I mean, that's what this is about, is just getting us to share with one another. I mean, you guys are experts just as much as I am. And so um, getting ideas from each other is a great thing. Uh, we next want to transition to uh, looking back at our winter training challenge. If you were at our our winter small group leader training. Remember, we kind of put a challenge there uh, for you guys to kind of work through. And what that was centered around what is the concept of a co-leader? So as you look at the responsibilities they have, we have leaders for a reason. We need point people. We need communication avenues. All that stuff is great. But we kind of said, you know, what would a co-leader look like for your group? And to do that, we kind of walked through these questions. We said, when you think of a co-leader for a group, who comes to mind? Like, is there a couple or a person that, that kind of instantly uh, comes up when you think of that word or that idea? What are their qualities? What are they like? Uh, and then what's one practical thing that you can begin to hand off to them in the next month? So uh, what we want to do tonight is just kind of follow up and say, how's that going? Like, were you able to do that? How did it work? Uh, you know, what's your situation like on that challenge? We want to kind of follow up and see how you're doing today. So talk with each other. Go ahead and share uh, kind of how that's going for you guys so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So let's go ahead and kind of share with each other what you guys have talked about at your table. Now, on the how's it going, I'm not just asking for success stories. I'm not just saying, you know, what's been great and what's been wonderful. If there's been struggles, go ahead and say that, because I guarantee you're not the only one. I mean, these things are hard, and that's why we talk about them and challenge ourselves with them, because they're, they're not always, they don't always go like we think. Um, so what's some things you heard at your table? What's something you share? How's it going with the concept of a co-leader? Anything you guys want to share with everybody? I sure would like this old football joke about get that ball, Leroy. Leroy don't want that ball. He want that. <laughs> and yeah. we got a guy that will co-lead with me and do it, but he would rather not at this stage in life. Our mm. are older, and so I'm having a little hard time, you know, knowing how to disperse. I like these ideas of getting, like what Ron said about getting people to do different things yeah. each time. I feel like I'm kind of doing it all. Sure. Kind of, and it's just not good for the group for me to do. Sure. Sure. Well, and we can I, we can identify with that too, just because of the layout of our group. We were just talking. I did. I used to have a co-leader. Okay. But and but back then I was on the road and traveling for my job. I was mm -hmm. still working, and I wasn't there all the time. And but anymore, because of our group, we're we're an older group. Yeah. We're well. We're not the youngest anymore. We used to be. <laughs> but. Um, and it's, it's we're spread out two two couples from Kansas and, and uh, it's just kind of impossible. I shouldn't say impossible, but it's we not likely. it's not likely we <laughs> we do it. I mean, yeah. I lead the group and and try and keep things going, and my wife plans things, and sure. you know, plans the food, so on and so on. But we do. But we, but we I, haven't pursued the. We have we have not been good about pursuing a co-leader mm -hmm. situation because we re we don't have anybody that we really sure. would be willing to do that at this point in time. Yeah, and all groups are different. There definitely are situations where that happens, where it's just there's just not somebody there. Anybody else have good things or things you've seen or positive sides to this? I did. Uh, I was gonna say, well, Andrew was leader obviously here for a while. Yeah. I originally read this 
group with my wife way back in the day, then we got a bunch of kids all in one year, so we passed it to Andrew, and now we're kind of finally getting in the groove after a few years of that, and he had a baby in his work, so now he passed it back to us, so we didn't really do the challenge, because we already kind of had a thing, yeah. it's like, if one of us are there, or one of the couples, like, uh, then that person would leave that. If we don't have that, we have four couples in our group, so if the Congers and Smiths wouldn't be there, we have one couple that's a little quieter, but um, then we usually would cancel it. That doesn't happen too often. Maybe sure. all the kids sick during the winter time or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so usually then it's nice as if one of us are still there, then the other person leaves. It's not even really a like, have to talk about type thing, but sure. that person does it. So, so we kind of have that one. I don't know all the other challenges. Yeah, we, ha we have a few groups like that. It's always funny to me because it seems like every month there's a different leader and I'm trying to figure out who I'm supposed to email. Um, but yeah, those, that, that happens a few times where these things change and go back and forth. And, you know, it's great to have that resource because, yeah, like babies come, babies go, you know, parents get sick. Uh, you know, there's a lot of situations where, um, you know, it's just it's not a season for right now. You know, maybe that's a few weeks, maybe that's a few months, maybe that's the year. But to have to be able to smoothly transition back and forth is a great, a great asset to have. Anybody else have any experiences in this? We've had a fun year with that challenge that you gave okay. us a year ago, and I have two guys in my group that we, as I've told Tim, we've been using uh, more and more. Okay. I mean, the blessings have just been incredible. It's just free for me. Sure. Thing, after all these years, <laughs> feeling like I have to be the leader. Yeah. It's just really, and they do a great job, and, and so it's just been a healthy, healthy thing for our group this last Sure. Well, that's great for you guys to share. And again, there's no winners and losers in this. We want to, it's a challenge, and in some places it works better than others, and some we have different situations. And so we want you to just keep moving forward. That's, that's, that's what we're asking, uh, to continue to do that. Another thing you might remember from our winter meetings is we talked about our core values of small groups. Remember we had those three big, black, ominous things. Um, <laughs> to be able to kind of challenge us on who we are as a ministry. Does anybody remember what those three are? Just to kind of challenge you. The first one? Care. care yes. The first one is care. That uh, a big part of small groups is just being there for one another. You know, to be in there through situations like Dave was talking about, you know, when the, the small group shows up in the hospital, we hope that doesn't happen, but when it does, uh, that they're there to care for one another, know your situations, to walk through that. That's been the history of small groups, and we're not asking that to change in any way. We want that to continue to be who we are. Anyone remember the second one? Second one was grow. And we we're talking about spiritual growth, that we want to create environments where people are challenged in the word, where they're challenged in their disciplines, where um, we can see spiritual formation beginning to happen in people's lives. We want to create uh, scenarios that we do that through studying the word together, through, you know, we're going to spend uh, three months on fasting or something like, you know, trying to get each other to, in our communities, challenge each other to do, to do more. And then the last one multiply. was multiply. And um, like I said, then when you put these three together, it can seem sometimes like going in opposite directions. It can, there can be an inherent tension between how do we do these three things together, and you know that's that's uh, that's unapologetically how it's designed. That we do want you to live in that tension. We do want you to have to feel that push and pull. And it's I'm not in any way saying it's easy. I mean, I lead my own group too. I know I know how this goes. Uh, but that's something we want to get into. And so uh, kind of like we did last spring, we want to continue this concept of multiplication. It's it's a tough idea a lot of times, and there's a lot of misunderstanding and confusion about it. And so we want to continue our training today on, on what multiplication is. And so kind of like we, what we did in the winter, we first want to talk about a concept, an idea of what multiplication is, a theory, and then we'll get into some practice, some real concrete ways how we can make this happen. So uh, one of the things we want to talk about tonight is that multiplication looks like a lot of things. There is not one way to multiply. There's not one idea, there's not one concept, there's not one way that I do it. We're going to talk about five tonight, and there's actually many more than that. There's not only five. We're just going to give kind of an, an easy five. And these five that you're going to see, I'm going to warn you ahead of time, some of them you'll like and some of them you won't. Some of them are good, positive, healthy ministry things, and some of them are not. They're all multiplication, uh, but they happen in different ways and in different shapes and in different forms. So let's go ahead and go through these. Uh, number one is the split. Now, when we think of multiplication, that's probably most times what people think happens. It looks like this. You've got a small group. You've got people who are together. And uh, for whatever reason, we decide we're going to break up. We're going we're gonna to go apart. 
uh, that, again, a lot of reasons why that could happen. Sometimes your group just, you, you recognize among the group, we're too big, like this is unwieldy. You know, there's too many kids to take care of, or there's not enough space in our house, or uh, whatever happens, and the group just decides, you know, it'd be easier if we just kind of split apart, that we have kind of a little bit of a divine, dividing line already, let's just go ahead and, and capitalize on that. And those things happen. Uh, let me say again, like I've said many times, as a ministry, we will never come to your group and tell you you have to do this. You know, take that fear off of your plate. Um, groups do sometimes split, but if they ever do split, it's because of their own decision. It's their own volition that says, this is right for us at this time to do. Uh, and if you do that, we'll walk through how to do that well. Um, but this is one way of multiplication, but it is not the only way. And there are many other ways to do it. Uh, a second way that people uh, multiply is when the group just dissolves. Uh, let me kind of walk you through what that looks like. You have a group, they all start the same. Uh, and then over months or years, you lose some members. Uh, they move away, take jobs in another city, uh, they find another church, uh, life situations change, like they got new babies and things are just too busy, or they got sick parents and there's just too much responsibility, or whatever happens, and they begin to kind of just fall away over time, and then your group of small groups now is a very small group, uh, and the attendance lacks, or maybe there's, you know, relational strife in your group and two people aren't getting along anymore and there can be a lot of different ways but eventually you just realize this group's coming to an end like we just can't sustain what's here now and again there's a lot of different reasons that happens now let me say first of all that is normal i don't know if you guys know that but small groups eventually kind of fizzling out is a normal life cycle of a community we often, when this happens, look at it and we think it's tragedy. You know, we think, oh, you know, I'm a terrible leader, or oh, I really messed this up, or you know, I was given responsibility and I did a terrible thing. And, and I hope you guys know it's not. Like, this is normal and in some ways completely unavoidable. This is what happens when people get together. It's, it's a life cycle. You can think of it like a bell curve. I mean, even as a church, we've talked about like seasons of organizations where you have spring and summer and fall and winter. Winter's where it dies. That's what happens. The average life of a small group is about five or six years. That's the average cycle. So, yeah, some of you are like, yeah, I've had my group for 17 years. It's like, that's amazing uh, that you could stretch it out that long. I mean, that's incredible. Uh, but everything, everything eventually dies, and that's, that's a normal life cycle. These things happen. I mean, it, it happened this last week. We had a, a small group leader come to me after 10 years of their small group that it eventually dissolved. And he and his wife were broken up about it. And so we met and we talked and I shared with him that just like, guys, this is normal. The fact that you get 10 years out of that group is amazing. And so think of this as an encouragement. Think of this as, you know, a job well done. Because uh, it's just, it's how it goes. Everything does eventually, every group eventually dies. And so these things happen for a lot of different reasons and it happens. And so maybe you get to this point and then your group says, how can we, you know, like a plant, we've kind of reached the end of our cycle. How can we replant? How can we bring new life from this? And so the group kind of goes and says, let's go, let's get this over here. Let's get this over here. We're each going to, we've done this a long time. We know the system, we know how it works, and we're each going to start new groups. Uh, out of the death of one group, we're going to birth two more. Uh, those kind of happens, and that's, that's how you can kind of bring life and turn this around, and that, that's, a, that's a positive thing. Uh, number three is the graduate form. So what happens in this is you've got your group, everything's going, you've got your leaders and everything, and then over time, Maybe this is months, maybe this is years. There's just a couple or a single or whatever that just kind of stand out. And it's like, these people have they've grown up. They're not who they were when they first came in, or they just they have a lot of talents and abilities as a leader. It's clear that like, you know, having an 18-year-old at home, something needs to change here. If they stay in this place and in this thing, we're kind of stunting who they're going to. So we, you know, in, in all sincerity and honesty and love for them, realize they just need to move on. They need to go somewhere else. They need to take the great things that we've done here in our community and share those with others. And so it's time for them to kind of graduate. It's time for them to go and to move on and to start somewhere else and do that. Um, the fourth way is the season. Sorry, that was there. Is the season group. And how this starts is you, you know, have your normal group. And this group uh, just feels kind of a burden and a calling because they've been doing this for a while and they know how good small groups happen to say, you know, we kind of, we should be helping other groups. We should be kind of taking a mentor season where we're going to kind of work with young leaders or work with new groups or kind of, you know, take a season 
where our group's going to be different for a while. So like in this example, they all kind of go off to grow other groups just for a season. Maybe that's three months, maybe that's a year, maybe it's just a few weeks, whatever it is, and say, you know, our group's not going to meet every Tuesday night for this season because we're going to each go and mentor a young leader. Or we're each going to go and kind of come alongside a newly forming group to help them figure out how to do this, to get formed, to make those first baby steps. And then when that season's over, we come back. Like we, we get back to the, to the place of where we used to be. And so there's a lot of ways to do this. Sometimes it means you don't meet at all for that season. Sometimes it means you meet less regularly, like once a month. Sometimes I've seen groups do it where they never change their schedule. They still meet every Tuesday night. It's just now they're also meeting on a Thursday night or their, group, their mentor group's meeting on a Wednesday night or whatever. They're kind of doubling their time. And if you've got capacity for that, great. Uh, but a lot of people don't. And so the point is they, they break apart for a season. Everybody knows that, everybody understands it, everybody agrees with it. And then they come back uh, again in that. Then our fifth example of multiplication is an endpoint. What it means for this is this is a group that from day one kind of lights a fuse and says, at some point we all agree that this is going to end. However long that is doesn't really matter. It could be as short as a semester or it could be as long as two or three years where you say the point and the vision and the purpose of our group is to grow it and split it from day one. We all agree to that. We all understand it. We're not going to hurt anybody's feelings because we've, we've said that from day one. And so they form their group. But they say, what we want to do is we want to bring in people to this group, friends, neighbors, colleagues, you know, the guy over the fence, whatever it is, we're, going to, we're just going to invite people in our group because our group's going to be about, you know, sharing the word and sharing the gospel and getting everybody in it. And so they do that and, you know, people invite and join and all that kind of stuff and they're growing and other people are coming and it's just keeping going. Eventually your small group's not a small group anymore uh, and you've got to figure something else out. But we've said from the day one, this is going to be a short-term thing. You know, short-term is different on everybody's definition. But from day one, we said we have an endpoint, and that endpoint creates urgency, and that urgency creates productivity. And they've said that this is, this is our system. This is what we're going to be as a group. And so everybody understands that from day one. The point is there's a lot of ways to multiply. This is a spectrum of things. Some of them seem great and positive and, you know, hey, I want to be that. And some of them are like, well, this is just what happened. This is just what occurred. I mean, even scripturally, we have examples of this. You know, Paul and Barnabas, great missionary team. Great things happen. Then they have beef with one another, and it doesn't seem positive. It's not a way to teach good missiology, but uh, from one group you have two. That's a good thing. We see it in, in Acts 8 with the church, you know, Jesus told them from the beginning, leave Jerusalem, you know, start here, but leave it and go somewhere else. And they weren't doing that. And it took the stoning of Stephen and persecution, the church getting smashed to finally multiply and be what it wants to be. That's not a good circumstance. That's not happy. That's not fun. But sometimes that's what it takes. And so don't look at this as just always good or always bad. There's a lot of reasons that create multiplication. And there's a lot of ways that this can happen. What I want you to do in your groups is kind of talk about that for a little bit. Say, in these five examples, did you see your small group there? Uh, maybe one that you've been in before or one you're leading now. Like, do you see yourself anywhere on that? Why or why not? Uh, were there examples that you liked? You're like, that's a cool idea. I think well, let's go for that. Or there are others you're like, I really hope that never happens to us. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about that? And has this discussion changed your view of multiplication anyway? Uh, go ahead and talk with each other about that. We'll come back together at the end. So what we've done so far tonight, again, is to talk about the concept, to talk about the idea. And some of this can be abstract, and it's hard to know, you know how the rubber meets the road and what this really means. So uh, I want to talk about the practice, the exercise of multiplication. So, um, you know, on my side of the table, I kind of see the big picture of our small groups ministry. And one of the things that happens on a regular basis is I get an email or I get a form that comes into my inbox or somebody talks to me on a Sunday morning and they say, hey, I want a small group. You know, I heard about it from somebody else or I saw it on the, you know, the flap and the worship guide or whatever. And I want to join a small group. And so now it's my team's responsibility to, to get them in one. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I do is I go and I look on that board that I talked about with all your faces and all kinds of things. And one of the things that's listed there is how many people are in your group. And I look at those and, you know, part of it kind of worries me because I see 18, I see 22, I see all kinds of stuff. And man, it's like, I can't ask them to add to their group. They're just way too big anyway. And so um, 
throughout the year, sometimes that goes well and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, you know, within two weeks of somebody asking, we can get them placed in. But there's been a few this year that it's been three months or more from the time that they're asking. So they're kind of hanging that whole time. They want to join a group. They want to be a part of this church. They want to be in a community. And it's just tough to figure out where the place is and to make that happen and all those kind of things. And, you know, it's not about personalities. It's not about, you know, who lives where and all that kind of stuff. I think what, at the end of the day, what we're struggling with as a ministry is that we just need more groups. We just do. Uh, we currently are 52 groups. And I think ideally, you know, in an ideal perfect situation, we'd have 100. I think that's kind of what we're looking at. And so to do... Yeah, yeah. Um, we, so the last time we did an audit, uh, we had 60 groups at that point. Um, and when we did that audit, we had about 700 people in the small groups, uh, totally overall. And so, you know, simple math on that, that ratio is way too high. Uh, in my personal opinion, the ideal small group is eight adults, like the ideal. So I think it could be smaller than that in work. I think it can be bigger than that in work. But yeah, we're looking at 18, 20, 22, 24 people in a small group. Goodness gracious. Um, so we just need more groups. But to have more groups, we've got to have more leaders because you, you can't start a group without them. Uh, they'll fizzle and die in a, in a matter of months. And so part of what we've talked about in the concept of co-leader, part of kind of the, the idea I wanted to seed in your mind is to ask the question, does your group have one? You know, do you have a leader in your group that needs to be doing that? Is there somebody that you could do? Because, you know, it's a great season to ask it because we're getting into the summer. A lot of groups take breaks in the summer or meet less frequently, and that's kind of a transition period. And we're going to start in the fall, and we're going to need a lot more groups in the fall. The fall, as I learned this last fall, is a big season for small groups. Not only do we do the big kickoff right in this room, uh, our kickoff last year, we had 126 people that asked to join a small group on one Sunday. Uh, and it's like, okay. <laughs> and I'm expecting this fall will probably be pretty similar. And so it's like, you know, where are we going to put them? We've just got to have new groups. That's, it's, there's no way we can, we can put those into what we already have. And so to do that, we need leaders. So kind of my, my challenge for your summer as we're coming into it is uh, to let me know. If you've got somebody in your group that's ready to start their own group, that's ready to be a new leader, uh, let me know. Because we, we, need, we need them in the fall. We just will. Um, and so I know that our best leaders come from people that are already in groups. We can pull some from other places and we can have new couples that come in and they've done it before or whatever. Those are great and those are wonderful, but I know our best leaders are people that are already in groups. So kind of the next step of this challenge is that, you know, is, is that somebody who's in your group right now? You know, how you have the summer to think about it, you have the summer to pray about it, to kind of approach that person or that couple and begin to see that idea and then I hope Come August, send me an email, text me, call me, pull me aside on a Sunday and say, hey, I got somebody for you. That would be my dream, <laughs> is to make that happen. So I'm asking you to help be a part of that. Uh, any questions on what we've talked about tonight? Any questions on multiplication or how that happens or co-leaders or anything you want to discuss? Right. random person obviously they come to church but that doesn't necessarily mean anything right so it's like could you can you almost like request ahead of time like if we were to say hey there's a couple like you could ask the question are you ever interested in foster care and like, actually we want to get that and then like we can have the, you know what i'm saying like yeah. they would be a, like a, if you had almost a type of like a specialization yeah, I don't for know a group yeah we do have that with other groups like we've got a group for people with disabilities okay, so and we've got a group um We've got groups for ages sometimes. Like we've got a young adult singles. We've got a few of those groups. Um, and so on my board, we put a little sticker on it to make sure that's, yeah, to specify this is a specialized group. And so when we have those situations, we, we know where to put them and all that kind of stuff, and that's great. So yeah, absolutely. If there's something unique and different about your group, you know, a little filter in place or something, just communicate about it. And we'd love to, we'd love to make sure that continues and that works. Uh, kind of let you know on those boards, on the little things, we have a, uh, o, a C, and an L, and then we circle it for each of you. So kind of how we've communicated in the past. O means open, which means you're willing to take more people. Closed means you're not. And L means you're looking, like you're desperate. <laughs> uh, you're like, if you have anyone, please put them in our group. Uh, we have some of those. So um, if that status changes with you, please let me know. 
Um, it, maybe you felt like, I don't know if we ever communicated that, so you want to update me. Or, you know, things have changed. You know, our group was closed and we used to be healthy, but some things have happened and now we're kind of desperate. You know, things have changed. You know, we want to be looking now. You know, those are things to just, to just let me know. So, quick email, text, and we can change all that. Yeah, uh, we did a survey. I don't know if you guys remember. We did ask you guys to fill out a survey, and uh, about 50% said they do. Now, I don't know, 50, 50 50% said they, they stay with the curriculum. I don't, know the, I don't think that means 100% of the time. I think they're probably going to have seasons where you know, they do an Ozark thing or they do a, a book study or whatever. But at least time, in, you know, sometime at least, about over 50% said they use the, the curriculum. I know this doesn't necessarily relate to the topic of the evening, but... Sure. Um, your table. We've typically met every week in other years, mm -hmm. and so I was able to hold that together a little bit better. This year, we were more of an every other week. Mm -hmm. I found holding the, together the church programming with the sermon. A lot yep. of go to Bible school too. Yeah. It a rang with sameness. Sure. Especially on Sundays when I preached it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel you. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we've heard this before. What could be? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or, but it was just the continuity. Yeah. From our group going to from an every week to this year or every other, mm -hmm. it was a little hard to hold that together. Sure. Yeah, I mean, there, I fully recognize a redundancy issue mm -hmm. when it comes to Sunday school and small groups. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, we don't want to be kind of walking through the same thing over and over again. Um, we have something in mind to do about that. Um, we've been, I haven't announced this to everybody, but we've been experimenting with something over the last 10 months that fixes that issue. Um, I don't know that all groups would be ready for it. I don't know that all groups would want to do it, but we're trying it out to see if it works. Um, but it's kind of taking the concept of Sunday morning, Sunday school classes and small groups and kind of figuring out a way for them to not be that, to not be just the same thing twice a week, to be something different that has something else in it. Um, if you want to know more about it and you're like, well, that sounds cool, I'd love to talk with you about it because um, we've been trying it out. We're ready to kind of expand it a, a little bit more this fall. Um, but uh, yeah, we recognize that's an issue and, and it's something that we want to get better at. Do, do most of the groups meet every week or twice a month? Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know the statistics on how many meet every other week or how many meet every week. Um, I would guess it's about half and half, uh, but I don't know that that's accurate. Um, we, I mean, we, we let you guys choose that. Um, there's strengths and weaknesses of both. Um, I'll be honest with you, my biggest concern with the every other week meeting, my biggest concern with that one is if you miss one of those, then you don't see each other for a month. And that's just, that's a really long time. Um, so that's, that's my big concern with that one. But if you guys, if that's what's right for your group, I'm okay with you doing that. Uh, it just has that. Dave. I just say, I, for our, my school, I think probably 100% of them would say they really like the idea of Sunday school and church being on the same team. Mm. Uh, you're going to do Matthew 9, and you're going to hear Matthew 9 from Cy or whoever's preaching. Not so with the small group, mm. because then it becomes almost repetitious. We, right. we hear it in Sunday school, we hear it in church, and then we hear it Monday night. And they wanted to have more diversity. And what we've done, uh, OCC.edu and Next Level. And I tell you what, you've got Mark, you've got Mark Moore, you've got uh, Doug Welch, you've got all sorts of guys that have some fantastic videos on there uh, from everything. I mean, the Holy Spirit, uh, yeah. miracles of Jesus, uh, you know, it, it's, it's some good study really get you thinking. Um, and I'm not advertising against the small no. group. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying there's yeah. an alternative out there yeah. uh, if you have that situation in your small group. Yeah, and I'd say the big, one of the biggest reasons we have the curriculum is I would say more than half of our people that are in small groups are not in a Sunday school class. Uh, I would say over, well over 50% don't aren't here at 9.15 on Sunday morning. And so, uh, that curriculum gives them a chance to kind of work through that passage in a community to kind of, you know, Sunday morning's great, but, you know, there's not really a chance to discuss it and take it to a deeper level. And, and so that's really more for them, honestly, because uh, that's the majority of our groups. 
kind of a stat question on attendance, but like he's asking every other week, do groups ever list too? Uh, I don't know if you can tell because it was a bigger amount of time, but do most groups take off the summer? Like we continue to meet through the summer. But yeah. I mean, does it, because I know they have that like weekly thing where you log in, you know. Right. And then, my annoying emails you get every week. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, uh, we just learned this week that you guys took it back, so don't worry, we'll fix that. One of my interns is going to fix that this week, and uh, you'll be you'll be getting the emails. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a fifty-fifty thing as far as people taking off? I I have no idea what that is. I would say the majority. The majority. The majority change their schedule in in the summer. I would say. Okay. So like uh, my small group, for example, uh, we meet every week, um, but we're going to meet once a month during the summer. Um, so it's not the complete and total break. I mean, we even, our last meeting, we, we're still gonna meet for two more weeks in a row. Uh, we're gonna go through the, our kids' school schedule. Uh, but then we already put which dates in June and which dates in July and which date in August we're gonna get together and meet. Um, so I, I feel like that's probably the most normal thing that groups do. Um, but, you know, I don't want anything to be default. I don't want, you know, we continue to meet every week or we don't meet at all or we meet once a month. Like, you have to figure out as a leader what's right for your group. Uh, for some groups, the summer kills their momentum and they come back in the fall to shambles. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, if that's what's going to happen in your group, don't take a break. Uh, you need to continue. But for other groups, it's like, you know, we're really busy for various things. And so it's really great to just have that break and to come back refreshed. Christmas month there, like, right. meet, like the yeah. first week of December and then we take off. So like, sure, yeah, similar things in the winter. Yeah. There's a reason we don't do a an early winter small group leader training. <laughs> I don't ask you to do anything in December <laughs> uh, because I just know how it works, um, all that kind of stuff. Anything else? Okay, um, I wanna let you know about summer meetings with me. If you guys remember last summer, uh, we kind of did this thing and I, I thought it went well where we had groups come in. Uh, we're gonna do a similar thing this summer except I'm gonna give you two different ways to do it, two different options. Option number one is kind of how we did it last summer, where we get, uh, almost like at your table here, we get a group of leaders together, about six to 10 people, uh, and we come on Sunday mornings, we talk about uh, how small groups going, we give feedback, feedback comes to me, by the way, not, I'm not evaluating you. <laughs> You're evaluating the small groups ministry based on what you've experienced, what do you like, uh, what's going well, what's difficult, what would you like to see? How can we do this better? We kind of just have round table discussion and talk about those things and kind of have a way to connect and do that. Uh, we're gonna try to do those on Sunday mornings this year. So 9.15. So um, I, I know last year, one of the struggles we had was evenings were just difficult for people in the summer because there's a lot going on and, and all that kind of stuff. I figure, you know, most of us can be here on Sunday morning. So let's, let's just do it then. Um, so what we have in the back, Kat has it there, a sign-up sheet uh, for four Sundays, two in June and two in July through the summer. Uh, sign up for those if you want to be a part of that group. Uh, but we want to give a second option, which is individual lunches. So what that would look like is myself and either you and you and your spouse, we would figure out a time in the summer to come and to go and have lunch together. It's on, it's on me, it's on my budget um, to, uh, to come and just, you know, if you say, you know, to us, you know, feedback and evaluation, that's not really where we're at right now. We, we need to talk to you because there's just, you know, we're having struggles or we have questions or you just want something more personal, more pastoral. Uh, uh, we want to offer that as well. And to tell you, you could do both. If that's what you want to do, you could do both. I'm just asking to at least do one of those options. Either come in with the big group or come in individually. We want to do both. So we also have a sign-up sign up sheet there. There's no dates on it because we'll have to talk individually about when we can make that work. Uh, but I want, to, I want to hang out with you at least once a summer. I want to talk to you, get an update face-to-face. -face. That can happen in a group. That can happen kind of two-on-one, -on -one, whichever uh, works for you. But we, we hope you guys get the chance to do that this summer because we want, we want to have that connection and see how you guys are doing. So again, before you leave, go by the, where you signed in, and there'll be a sign-up sheet for each of those. They're pretty clear on that and how it works, uh, so we can do that. And then number one, is that supposed to be like, our, like six to ten people our small group comes in? No, it, those are just leaders. Okay. So it's kind of like at your table right now. Yeah, okay. So like you would all sign up. You don't have to do it, but you would all sign up for one week, and there'd be like ten people in the room. Myself, uh, one member of my team, and then like four leaders or six leaders or eight leaders or something like that. So I'd be love it if you do both, but I would ask you to choose one of the one of the two options. All right, thank you guys for coming. Appreciate you again. And all this kind of stuff. We have one last thing before we go. Almost forgot. Good thing I didn't. Which, uh, if you remember, in the spring meetings, one of the things that we, uh, as a ministry, as we evaluate ourselves and look at who we are and what we want to do better, we say one of the things. 
uh, we want to do for our small groups leaders is ramp up our appreciation to, to remind you guys how much we uh, love what you do and love what you sacrifice and love that you're a part of this ministry. And so one of the ways that we say we're going to do that is every time we get together for these meetings, we're going to honor one of our small group leaders to say this person or this couple has gone just above and beyond uh, what it means to be a small group leader. And we just want to recognize that, give them a small gift and just say, we love what you're doing and, and we're grateful for that. And so tonight, Dave and Vicki Gilmer, come on up. That's you, man. Come on up. Cat uh, has, Cat, come on up. We're going to, we'll give it to him in front of everybody. Well, hopefully those flowers go to the right place. My wife's going to see me with another woman. Well, thank you yeah, I'll so give much. me a handshake. <laughs> and there's a, there's a gift in the card there, so don't throw that away. Uh, and all that kind of stuff. And, and the reason we're honoring the Gilmers is because they've just, it's been a rough few months. Oh. Uh, you've had things happen within your group, things in your own individual lives, uh, you know, dealing with tragedies with, around your group and just various things. And I remember just this last few months hearing those over and over again and being like, man, that's just a lot to take on. But they're a good group. Yeah. It's them, it's not us. But in the midst of it, you guys have shown faithfulness and endurance and perseverance. And uh, we just want to recognize in front of everybody, say, we're glad you're group leaders. We're glad you're doing what you're doing, and we hope you keep going. Thank so, you very much. Thanks, Dave. Yep. God bless. Yep. So uh, while we do pick out some individuals for that, we, we appreciate all of you and what you do and your continual sacrifice and, and just Christ-like leadership. So thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, I hope to see you this summer. Don't forget to sign up on your way out for one of those meetings. And again, thanks for coming.